Hello and welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. In this video we're joined by Mr. Richard Holden Hello. and we are going to cook a beginner's brisket on a Weber 57 centimeter master touch grill. So Richard, we've got a, a full brisket here and we're going to use a, another Angus anoint rub, my favorite one. The Mumami. Yep. This one is good for um, beef, steak, beef, steak and cow. So I think it's the correct one. Like the, like the descriptions on these yep. products. Uh, we've got a full brisket. It's a 3.2 kilo brisket. Um, if you go into if you go into the butchers, typically in the UK we have rolled brisket. It's exactly the same cut. It's just that this one is prepared and left flat. So if we have a look under here. You'll see that this is beautifully trimmed. Uh, the bones would have been on here, just running this way, and they've been all taken off, nice and trimmed down. This is what we call the flat. And if I turn that back over again, this little part here that they've just taken some of the connective tissue out of in American brisket. This is this is what will be the point and this is what will be cooked separately from the flat and part way through cooking it will be taken off, cubed, more rub and a little bit of barbecue sauce on into a foil tray back onto the barbecue and that will be your burnt ends. But for simple brisket 101 we're just going to do everything together. Uh, leave it a little bit of the fat on the top, it will render and it will keep the, the meat nice and juicy. Um, and we're going to use the mumami as you mentioned. Uh, the brisket's been brought out of the fridge, it's up to room temperature. It's been out of the fridge for a good half hour, 45 minutes. It's important to get this rub into all those little nooks and crannies, all the way down the edge as well. And then we'll flip that over, a nice big piece. And this really, in terms of ease of cooking, really simple thing to cook, because you just put it on in the morning and um, just keep an eye on it during the day, but by the time by the time it comes to eating, you've done all the work beforehand. Yeah. You just let it rest a good couple of hours before you're going to eat and just um, just slice it. But if we had time, we would um, we would let this rest with just the rub on for about half an hour, 45 minutes. If people want to speed up that process, uh, one of the things you can do is use a like a French's mustard on the brisket to help the rub stick. Yep. That's so a really nice one to do. Yeah, and I really, you know, you can go everything from a simple salt and pepper just a mixture of um, mold and sea salt and freshly cracked black pepper. You can do yeah. like a 50-50 mix, rub all over. You can do the spice rubs. This is this is um, kind of very similar to an American style. Um, it's got the paprika, it's got the celery salt, it's got the uh, sugar and the regular salt in there. And the blend of flavors is, um, is specified yeah. to this one. Um, but you can, if you wanted to do, put a little bit of French's mustard on there and then put your put your rub on as well and it just helps everything to stick. So that's all the prep that we need to do on the brisket. Okay, so we're gonna take this over to the 57 centimeter. Take this over to the barbecue. And then we'll uh, show you how it goes on there. So Richard, we've come over to the 57 centimeters uh, master touch. Yep. I'm gonna lift the lid. Um, just explain briefly how we've set this one up. We've, so, go on. Go on. We've got half a basket with um, one of the half baskets, the char baskets in there, with a third of a chimney starter of fuel in there. We've got a foil tray in this side, which we've put some freezing cold water into to help maintain the temperature. And then literally this is gonna go straight over the indirect, over that tray of water. The water will help to regulate the temperature. It will also get warm as the lid's down and the whole barbecue warms up and it will give off steam. So in the same way that some of the other barbecues and cookers have that water pan in them to help keep the area nice and humid, that will do the same thing. Before we put the lid down, if you want to just use the tongs and yep. lift that hinge cooking grate up, uh, we're going to take some wood chunks. Uh, these are a hickory wood chunk. If you're doing a, a short smoke, then you would use wood chips and you would soak them. Yep. But because we're doing a longer smoke, uh, this is going to ideally smoke for a good few hours. Now, these chunks may not last a few hours, but they will last a good half an hour, 45 minutes. Then we can come back and we'll put some more on. Uh, we don't need to soak the chunks. They just go on. They will start smoking, see a few wisps already. Um, within 15 seconds, as a, as a general principle, you can already see it. So if we pop the lid down, um, put the thermometer over the area where the food is, top vent open, bottom vent open, We'll leave that. With the master touch, we're going to have to monitor the temperature, though, aren't we? We're going to have to keep coming back maybe every hour and just add three or four extra yeah. unlit coals. With the Weber product, it's 100% natural, so we can add them without it tainting the food. But this is just fire management. There you go. There's, you can smoking see the smoke already. coming out already. Smoking already. So, so we'll pop back um, over the course of the next few hours to see how the barbecue is running, see how the brisket's coming along, and then after about four hours, we're going to wrap, wrap it in that. foil and let it carry on cooking. So we'll pop back then. 
we're back with our brisket in the master touch. We How are we looking? It's had about four and a half hours. Just give that a little temperature probe. Uh, tip of the probe into the center part of the brisket. We're between 72 and 75. So that's our target temperature to take the brisket off. We have a crust on the outside. It's been smoked for a good three hours. Um, we, as far as temperature management or fuel management, whatever you want to call it, we came back into that maybe three times yeah. to put about three or four extra unlit yeah. coals into the barbecue at any time. Um, if you want to pop some beer into the tray, now this is where um, <clears throat> you might hear people talk about wrapping the brisket. If you just wrap it all the way around in tin foil, when you take it off, the tin foil goes quite brittle and um, the weight of the brisket might just tear it and then excess juices will escape. So by popping it into one of these foil trays, um, we can actually add some liquid in yep. the form of the beer. Now you can use cider, you can use stock. You've got to be careful with a beef stock cube or something like that though because of the salty content of it. Um, but what we do is we just pop this into a tray. Because this is a lean cut, if we left that on the barbecue up to the 95 for brisket, if we left it, left it on the barbecue up to 95 unwrapped, it could really dry out. So we just pop it into this tray. It's quite common to wrap it and then just add that little centimeter or so of liquid into the bottom. Um, and if you use a beer, then <clears throat> you might just happen to have a little bit of beer left in your bottle that you need to find something to do so with. So how long are we putting it back in the barbecue for? We're gonna put this back into the barbecue for another two hours. Then we're gonna temperature check it. We're looking for, for a typical American brisket that slices about the thickness of a HB pencil, that just has a nice bit of give in it, but melts in the mouth. We're looking for around about 95 degrees C. So a couple of hours, we checked the temperature before we took the lid off. It was holding nice and steady. We yep. added some fuels quite recently. So we'll keep managing the fuel and we'll just come back in a couple of hours and double check, double check the temperature. All right then, well, we'll come back in a couple of hours and we'll see how we're getting on. We're back to our brisket in the master touch. Yeah. It's held, we've topped up the fuel a few times during the course of the day and it's held its temperature. It's still set at 120, is it? One, it's, we've been keeping it between kind of 120, yeah, 130. 130 yeah. Just in that, in that range. So <clears throat> we've temperature probed it and it has reached 95 it's degrees. 95. Um, normally what you do at this stage, you'd let it rest, but we haven't got time to do it for the interest of this video. Yeah. Plus, plus I'm hungry. Plus we're hungry. And it's the end of the long day of filming and um, oh. camera crew want to go home, as do we. So um, this is the kind of thing you would put on, it's more of a maybe a weekend dish or a special yeah. day dish when you have all day, get up early in the morning, put it on and uh, just kind of, especially on the master touch, just tend to it throughout the day. Um, you don't really want to be standing there looking at it too, too much. Um, look at that, nice and juicy. Wow, that is just, oh, very excited <laughs> about that. Sorry, that's just nice and juicy. And um, the one thing to point out on this, I'm just gonna pop this in the tray in a second, but just round this outside edge, you can see a very, very faint smoke ring. It's a pink line that goes all the way around the outside. It's a nice little band around the brisket. It's a chemical reaction that takes place between the smoke and the protein. So it's natural, it's nothing to worry about. Obviously it makes sense that that part cooked before this part, and if it's cooked in the center, then the outside's cooked, so it's not a case of it being raw. So there we go, that just goes back in there. Let's turn this guy around, and then slice this. You wanna slice this about the thickness of a HB pencil. With this, it is a very lean cut, so once you've sliced it, what I would actually do is pop it back into that tray, arrange it back into the tray with the juices with the liquid in the bottom, and, um, and it will just help to keep it nice and uh, juicy for what, before people come and uh, put it on their plate if you're doing a buffet or something. So I think that's four slices is pretty ample for us down the taste, isn't it? I've stood here licking my lips. So we'll just take some little tasters off here. I can feel that it is still, it's hot. it would definitely benefit from resting. Um, however, as we say, it's got to be get the smoke. Mm -hmm. Nice level of spice. You definitely taste the hickory in that one. Mm -hmm. For somebody who hasn't got 
a Smoky Mountain or a smoker, dedicated smoker, and they've just got a cattle. I say just, but they've got a they've got a perfectly capable bit of kit here. Yep. Whenever we do brisket demos in store, and we use a smoker, the comment always comes up: Can I do this at home? I've got a gas barbecue. I've got a charcoal barbecue. Can I do that on? Yes, you can. It's just a little bit more maintenance. But as we've found out today and discovered today, it's actually not that. No, it's not. In, not that intensive, not that laborious to, to kind of come back every so often and just keep those coals going. You want to add new coals before the old coals die. Just like maintaining a fire, you want the old embers to be warm enough to catch the new ones. Um, that is a fantastic bit of It's bit got of a meat. bit of a kick to it as well. Mm, it has. Mm, so. Very good. For uh, more tips and tricks of how to do this sort of thing and for the recipe for this brisket, visit our website at hayesgardenworld.co.uk we are across all the social media platforms um, and of course YouTube, there's more videos on our YouTube channel. So for more tips and things, uh, visit those videos and we'll see you again next time.